the humble oyster. Has the U.S. Navy researchers and a nonprofit organization taken a closer look at how it can help improve water quality in the marine environment of Pearl Harbor? Marion Phillipson of Oahu Water and Becky Springer of the Naval Facilities Engineering Command of the Pacific are here to talk about the oyster reestablishment project that just started up in Pearl Harbor. Thank you so much and good morning, ladies. Good morning. Now, Marion, can you first tell us about how this project got started. Yes, Ross, based on successful initiatives using oysters in large bodies of water on the mainland, Chesapeake Bay, mm -hmm. Hudson River, Billion Oyster Project, the Navy became interested in the potential of a project here on Oahu. So in 2017, they did a pilot at Pearl Harbor using a non-native uh, oyster. It was readily available through the commercial oyster industry locally. And it was a triploid, meaning that it didn't reproduce, so there couldn't be any unintended uh, environmental negative consequences. The current project that we're doing is using two rare native species of oyster, the Hawaiian oyster and the uh, black lip pearl oyster. And the Navy is working with us, Oahu Waterkeeper, and our partner, University of Hawaii Hilo, uh, PAC-RC. And that's the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center. Dr. Maria Haas there was the first to use and test oysters in water quality and culture. And the only cultivator currently in the state, um, or the lead cultivator, with native species. So our, um, our project design is going to shed light on the distribution of oysters at Pearl Harbor and the success of growing them there and whether or not permanent oyster beds can be reestablished in the area. Very interesting. And Becky, can you explain how the oysters have the potential to help Pearl Harbor, the water quality as well as the ecosystem? And I guess I'm wondering, will they ever be safe to eat? <laughs> yes, sure. So oysters are ecological engineers. Uh, the presence of their shells create a hard bottom substrate that allow other organisms to live there. Um, many grow, many depend on the shells to grow, to reproduce, to stay protected from predators. So the presence of all these organisms on a oyster reef creates a really dynamic environment that is key to a very successful and healthy ecosystem. So we all know that oysters filter water. Um, they have the ability to filter up to 50 gallons a day, um, depending on the size of the oyster. Now, they can filter organic particles, such as um, phytoplankton and algae, but they can also remove inorganic materials such as PCBs, um, uh, heavy metals, oils, even sunscreen. So eating oysters raised in the wild is not recommended. Um, the, compared to oysters that are commercially raised, uh, those oysters are raised under very um, controlled environments and they are rigorously tested before the sale to the consumer. So the oysters that we're raising um, for this project in particular, um, they are not intended for the restaurant industry. They are not intended for the pearl industry. They are strictly there to um, improve the quality of the water in Pearl Harbor. And what type of oyster shells do we have here right now? So here's a few examples. Um, this one here is a Pacific oyster. Um, you can tell that from the crenulations running up from the bottom to the top of the shell. It also This one's a little faded, but you can see they have these dark streaks that follow the crenulations. Um, this one here is the eastern oyster. Um, this one is very common in Pearl Harbor. We're finding a lot of these, although they are not native. Um, you can tell they have a teardrop-shaped shell, um, such as this one is a nice example, um, and a lot more uh, uniform color and less crenulations running along the back. And then this one here is a Tahitian pearl oyster. It's related to the pearl oyster in Hawaii, um, but we don't have an actual one to show you just today of the pearl oyster from Hawaii, but this is the one that we are trying to restore into Pearl Harbor is the Hawaiian um, pearl oyster, black lip pearl oyster. And you can see that it gets its name from that black lip on the inside. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah. Now, Mary, can you elaborate more on the cultural significance of the oyster program? Yes. Historically, the waters of Pearl Harbor were known as Vimomi, or the River of Pearls. And the native uh, shellfish species there are preserved as legend in Hawaiian chants, mele and hula. Um, back before humans came to the Hawaiian Islands, there was a natural balance in the ecosystem that supported 
the oysters. But over time, with development and overfishing and pollution and unnatural uh, sediment, silt, and debris destroying the environment for the oysters, they nearly eliminated these native species of oysters. So this project is critical in the step of making sure that they don't go into extinction at this point. Well, thank you very much, ladies, for sharing your pros of wisdom. And good luck in the project. Thank you, sure. Ross. Thank you.